Good morning. I'm just going to pray before I begin. So, dear Jesus, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together today. And as we hear your word, I ask that you will come and speak into our hearts and make yourself known to us once more. Amen. What is truth? This was the famous question asked by Pilate during Jesus' trial uh, in front of him. The Jewish authorities had handed Jesus over to Pilate because they themselves did not have the power to execute him. Pilate takes Jesus into his palace and starts to interrogate him. He asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus responds by asking Pilate what he thinks rather than what others have said to him. Pilate then asks, what is it that you have done? Jesus responds by talking of his kingdom not being of this world, but of some other place. And in doing so, he opens up the truth to Pilate. However, Pilate thinks he's got one over Jesus, and he asks, You are a king then? At this, Jesus fully answers, You are right in saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? asks Pilate. And at this he goes to the people outside and he offers to release Jesus, as was the tradition at the Passover. What is truth? Jesus came to testify to the truth. Pilate had no interest in truth, or at least does not accept that there is one objective truth, as opposed to different things being true for different people. In today's passage from John 8, Jesus speaks of those who follow him knowing the truth and that that truth will set them free. However, we live in a time and a culture which is described as postmodern. The rise of politicians such as Donald Trump have meant that many people are referring to a culture of post-truth. What is meant by this is that truth cannot be objective. There is not just one truth out there which we either have to accept or reject. Instead, there are many truths out there because everybody has a slightly different perspective on what was said or done or how their actions or somebody else's actions were perceived. We even seem to plumb to the new depths of saying that truth is merely about who can shout the loudest to make their version of events heard and accepted by the most number of people. And sadly, this is not a new way of looking at truth. Pilate looked at it in much the same way. What is truth? he asked. For him, truth was what was politically helpful to him at any given time. He did not care about whether Jesus was a king in this world or in another world. He did not care whether Jesus had come to tell him about some deep meanings of life. What he cared about was whether he could deal with the situation and keep down a riot. The only truth that was relevant was whether the best way to deal with Jesus was to have him released, to have him executed, or to have him handed over to the Jewish people to do to him as they would. However, Jesus spoke of a deeper truth, one which, if it was accepted, would set people free. In John 8, Jesus makes it clear that the freedom that he brings through the truth that he shares is not about being physically captive, but is about being set free from the chains of sin. He makes it clear that there are not lots of truths, any and many of which may lead to peace and happiness and meaning in life. There is one truth, and that truth comes from God. We have a choice to either listen to what Jesus says that he saw when in the Father's presence, or to ignore it and listen to another voice that tells lie after lie to us. And that voice is the voice of the devil. When he lies, Jesus says, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Whether that lie is that there are many truths out there, and we all have our own truth, or whether the lie is that there is no truth, it is a lie. Whether the lie is that we have no need to be forgiven for any wrong, because no one can tell us how to live our life, or the lie is that we are so degraded that we are incapable of being forgiven. It is a lie. Whether the lie is that 
sin itself is actually freedom because we can live how we want or that we are held captive by our past because there's no way out of the bad decisions we have previously made. They are all lies. Jesus came to Pilate with a truth though. He came to the Jewish people with a truth and he comes to you and I now with a truth. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. How do we get this freedom? By listening to Jesus, by holding to his teachings and becoming his disciples. Then he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. However, this is the main thing that I want to say today. Jesus does not say that we should simply just allow ourselves to become little robots pre-programmed to follow a set of instructions. We are still human beings. We still need to use our brains to listen to what Jesus says, to understand it and to work out how to put it into practice in our own lives and in the communities that we live in. In short, he welcomes the opportunity for us to ask questions of him, because in doing so, we will open up lines of communication in prayer. Relationship will be formed. He will be able to answer us more fully and build us up in our faith. In John 8, the people came to Jesus with plenty of questions. They asked how they could be set free if they had never been slaves. When Jesus talked about being in the Father's presence, the people came back with the observation that Abraham was their father, that ultimately God was their father. In none of this did Jesus ever tell them that they were being impertinent for asking questions, that they should just accept what he said and go away. Instead, Jesus used the questions to open up the truth to them and to point out that by rejecting him and looking to kill him, they were in fact rejecting the God they called Father and listening instead to the father of lies. The problem that the people had was not that they were asking questions, but that they had failed to follow through on what they had discovered as a result of asking their questions. Plenty of people through history have asked Jesus these questions about his claims and his character. Some have followed through and some have not. But there do appear to be three main responses that we see though. Firstly, there is the Pilate's response. I've got a problem, Jesus. And the only reason that I am asking you these questions is to see if anything you say can help me reach the answers that I need to get to. I'm not interested in truth itself, but only what works for me. And this is largely the response of many people still today. As a society, we are not particularly interested in objective truth. A phrase that seems to underlie to what is, that may be true for you, but it is not true for me. Truth is about what feels good, and if it feels good, then it is true. Even if somewhere down the line it hurts other people, and it will do, because it is a truth that is based upon self-interest, rather than loving your neighbour. Secondly, there is the John 8 response of the people who were listening to Jesus. We are asking these questions of you, Jesus, because we are genuinely interested in what you have to say. However, we don't really like what we hear, because if we accept what you say, we will have to change the way we live drastically. And I can think of so many people who believe that there is a God, but decline to have a personal relationship with him through Jesus because of what it means for their lifestyle. For the Pharisees in Jesus' time, it was about having to give up their status, their power and their rules and regulations. For people today, it is often about having to give up on casual sexual relationships, the pursuit of money and the notion that they are in control of their own lives. Thirdly, there is the response of King Nebuchadnezzar in the passage from Daniel 3 that we have heard read. After the king had issued his decree about everyone worshipping his golden god, he was furious to find out that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were refusing to do as ordered. So he ordered them to be thrown into the furnace. Upon seeing the three men together with a fourth who looked like an angel, he had the men dragged out to find that they were not even singed. As a result, he gave praise to God. He congratulated the three men for standing their ground. However, he went too far. 
and he ordered that anybody who said anything against God was to be cut into pieces and their houses destroyed. For there is no other God who can save this way, he said. He was saying, I have listened. I have seen that God is real and true. Therefore, everyone must worship God on the pain of death. However, Jesus says that we all have to make a decision for ourselves. Do we listen to God and follow? Or do we listen but go our own way? He is willing to answer our questions, but he does not force himself upon us. And likewise, when we listen to Jesus and understand, we want to share that truth with others too. However, we must always do it in a way that is consistent with that truth. Nebuchadnezzar saw the power of God to save, but missed the way in which he did it. And we must be careful not to fall into that trap as well. Finally, though, we have the response that Jesus was looking for. And we see it perhaps in the response of the Samaritan lady by the well in John 4. Here we have a lady who met with Jesus by chance <coughs> and asked him a great number of questions and listened as Jesus told her about living water, how to get it, and what this meant for her life. She understood that there was a deep truth that was being imparted to her. She knew that accepting this truth would mean drastic changes in how she lived her life especially when it came to her relationships with men. Her response was to believe in Christ, to listen to him, and to allow herself to be changed as she did so. She invited others to come and listen to him as well, and later in the chapter, we see how many in that town believed because of the lady's, because of the lady's testimony. But many also believed because they had responded to her invitation to come and ask Jesus questions for themselves. So the challenge for us today is to ask Jesus those questions, questions that lie heavy on our hearts, knowing that if we ask, he will answer. But in asking those questions, we also need to be ready to act on the truth that he reveals to us in our answers. We have the choice to walk away or to allow ourselves to be changed. And if we belong to God, then Jesus says we will hear what he says and follow him. As we do so, we also need to be open to allowing God to use us as a testimony to others, whether that is through our words, our actions, and most likely both. He asks us to go out and invite others to ask their questions too, not through forcing them to, but by telling of what God has done for us. And as we invite others to come into Jesus' presence to ask their questions, we trust God that he will reveal the truth to us and to them, and that the truth will indeed set us free. Amen.